not cycling. The graphs on the Raspberry Pi repeater look okay. Science, did you want to look just at the base of the cliff, or did you want to get Let, Let's do a little, let's get a little off, I don't know, 50 meters, something like that, okay. off into the sand. Okay. And I can probably get uh, 50 meters from where we are, just with a tether. I'm more just kind of curious what the rubble looks like down here and if there's any, what kind of life might be living in the channel here because the, it's not much of a difference, but there is a little bit of a, a depression here across the, um, the channel and, and then it goes back up about 10 meters slowly on the other side. And I was curious to see what down here looked like. So there are blocks falling but they're relatively small compared to some of the, what look like, you know, faults or fissures in the wall itself. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything is recolonizing these rocks down here. Do you want another step, zero, six, zero? Sure. Or do you want to go more uh, east? You can do zero, six, zero. Okay. That'll get us where we need to go. Bridge, nav. Can we have the same step, please? Two zero zero six zero. Thank you. What's the Starlink interfering with? So, for everyone who's having weird noise things with the stream, it's tri it's getting fixed, but stay with us. And Daryl, would you put Telestrator back up in the top right, please? Oh, there's a Cuskill in Atalanta view. Well, maybe, unless it's another shark. <laughs> there it is. Not a shark. Not yeah. sure what else, though. So most likely a Cuskiel. So I'm kind of right. I'm at least going to pretend I'm right. Yeah, not much out here. But look, the interesting thing is it, it's still bare rock, though. Like, this isn't... It, there's enough current or whatever that it's... Um, winnowing out the sediment. living out here. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one crinoid. Take that back. There's one crinoid. No. Uh, monitor 2. Just the telestrator itself to uh, monitor 2. No monitor 2. The whole so the Herc Zeus is switched into the telestrator and then the telestrator is switched into the monitor too. And then I have to rearrange three other screens. Don't worry about it, I can also just verbally communicate it if I need to. 
I can hit a dive salvo if you want. Nah, it's fine. I, can. You got I guess it depends on whether... Daryl's got the technology over there. He's got to work it out. We can go old school and I can talk you through it. All right, I think that, that answers my question about what this looks like. We can go back to the wall now. Thank you. Right here. The, uh, pull up the uh, Tasmata. What was that, Dan? Hello to Jamestown, Rhode Island. Um, what was that, Dan? Let the bridge know what? The chiller is not cycling. Okay. There's a school turning in, tuning in. <laughs> um, and they're wondering what our mission is where we are. So we are currently in the Central Pacific. Uh, we are about how many miles from Palmyra Atoll? 150-ish. 150 miles from Palmyra Atoll. We are uh, just doing some ocean exploration of the deep sea habitat and for the past uh, Almost three hours we've been looking at these kind of crazy rock formations. Shot of the pen back there? Yeah. I don't actually, I don't even see it. Gotta push in there, Daryl. Oh, there. Got it. Rock pen's been knocked over. Hmm. Right, that's good. So the bathymetry sh is showing that the wall should be, um, the overall slope here should be reducing in the next 50 to 100 meters. And I'll be real curious to see if the wall just gets shorter or how it kind of turns. And we're, as we're coming up here, the wall is going to veer off to the west. Um, and we still got a, a good little ways before that happens, but just kind of trying to speculate on what might have formed this feature. Yeah, the geology of this area is just absolutely mind-blowing to me. And I'm not a geologist. Roger. Bring your head to the left for me. If you're not already on it.
So I just started uh, that really cool sponge that y'all saw, uh, I guess, about 30 minutes ago now. Uh, right as y'all were sampling it, we started our interaction. So it's so neat to, to go live with this entire right. class watching y'all sample that really unique Cliffs sponge. make it mad. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've reset your DVL like a hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> you should learn to look at blue dots instead of yellow squares. Okay, we're All back. Right. You want me to move you a little closer to the cliff? Sure, or you can move, do your... 330. Uh, yeah, that'll work. Bridge, nav. Can we move one five meters, three three zero, please? Thank you. It does look like it bent around to the south. Forty meters out. It's going to get closer to us. Oh, there are ways. Okay. Double shelf. There. Yeah. Center of the screen below the la lower third, but directly below the lasers on the oh, yeah. I see, I see. There for us, Daryl. Pushing a bit more. Right. Yeah, I'm not sure about this one. Probably some type of hydroid. Could be a Brizdo one. But probably a hydroid. All right, that's good enough. Thanks. Okay, you can go away. Thanks. So some people in the chat, can we move one zero meters, three two zero, please? Thank you. Um, some people in the chat are asking uh, if people in different countries can have a say on um, on the potential marine 
sanctuary of the area? I think we've answered this question before, but just for the new people in the chat or who are watching. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually know how the rules are written on that one. There's certainly no um, impediment to you submitting a comment. Like you don't have to certify you're a US citizen or anything. I don't remember putting a comment in, but I don't know. I think you are asked to share your address or something. Um, and I don't know how that would affect how the comment is, is processed. So this looks like the same sponge um, that we just sampled a few minutes ago. Just a couple examples of it. It's really cool with the these yeah. big areas of base kind of left over. It's almost like a sponge reef in its own way. Where the, the growing live tissue of sponge is leaving um, the attached spicules behind, changing the environment. Interesting, they perch right on the ledge there. Yep, absolutely. zigzag pattern of the uh, rock wall here is also kind of interesting how it seems to fail in and out and there's, uh, with these promontories and you can see kind of what looks like almost an erosional feature here on the right where that channel cuts down into the rock yeah and honestly these lines almost look like faults We haven't seen, like, there's rocks at the bottom of this thing. We haven't seen, like, or maybe we just haven't gotten off the rock wall enough to see them, but it's not like we're seeing big blocks at the base of this cliff, though. Yeah. Do you want another 10 meters, 320? Yes, please. Bridge, nav. <coughs> oh, Same step, little. please. 10320. Little family of sponges. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, a cuskiel. Is that a cuskiel? No, nope, that's a shark. Oh, my gosh. That's fish. That's the same dog fish, dog shark. Um, what about that? Is this a cuskiel? <laughs> Push in there. Yes. Girl. That's what you were talking about the whole long, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was talking about the whole time. All right, so this is a branching bamboo. Um, and we've mainly been seeing unbranched bamboos on this wall so far. So that's a little bit of a a new observation in the last hundred, couple hundred meters. And then the cusky all swimming around below it. Okay.
Another bamboo whip here. Another Ritagorgia. Seems like there's also kind of a big variety in the species of Ritagorgia. Am I saying? Is it species or yeah. genus? Yeah, okay. oh, species. Eridogorgia is the genus. Okay. And yeah, I agree. We've seen at least three different morpho species of Eridogorgia here. Oh, wow. Sorry. Looking at this. But we'll see it in a second. Oh, nice. Big shadow. Yeah. This is, this is a new creature we're seeing that might be just above the yeah. camera. Can we fly up a little bit. It's a big primnoid, which is definitely new on this dive. Talking about the shadow, you said? Yep. Yeah. Should be to the left. Up there we left. go. Uh, this is a, probably a primnoid, but also could be a bamboo. So if we can get a, a good look at that, please. Uh, in there a little bit there so this is the bamboo good, good. version of this growth form um, you can see those uh, black uh, nodes there which makes it a bamboo and it's got a couple squat lobster associates on it um, All right, we're good here. Thank you. Okay, can All you right. go ahead? Are you ready to zag? Sure. <laughs> zero, six, zero. <laughs> Bridge, nav. Can we have two zero meters, zero, six, zero, please? Thank you. So at some point um, in our zigging and zagging, let's zig a little bit further to the east and get off the wall for a minute. I want to see if there's any big blocks that have fallen off this wall kind of deeper and in the channel. Um, I can come back and reacquire the wall. Roger. What's that? Is that a shadow or is that a creature? That's a creature. There's something hanging hiding. One. Yep, there's something hiding under the overhang. Oh okay. no. Good to know. Um, so to the left, um, really under the shadow. And video, my telestrator appears to not be displaying on the uh, um, the big wall monitor. You're gonna have to drop down and probably look up. It's so far underneath the overhang. Roger. And you're going to need your forward-looking cam uh, light. Uh, I see, I see. Daryl's your copy. The telestrator isn't repeating up on yeah, that. Yeah, it's because I put the Zeus in there, not the telestrator. Ah. Uh, 
You'll have to switch it, Daryl. Switch uh, Telestrator into Monitor 2. Yep, so that's some kind of an enemy. We're not going to get uh, a great look on the it bottom? based on where it is. And then there was an eel floating around somewhere. All right, that's probably good enough. I just kind of wanted to confirm it's an enemy. Right it. Not really set up to look up on this vehicle. Nope. Wow. Yeah, we're having our van temperature slowly increase, which isn't good. Uh, open the iris a little there for us. So, Corley, we have a question for you, and this is a tough one. Mm -hmm. I know you are, like, so excited. I can see it on your face. 46 on the transformer. That's Since crazy. when was there active volcanism in the Pitcairn Islands? thought you might ask me that one, so I looked it up. Oh, ready to go. Uh, it was actually during the Pleistocene. So we're currently in the Holocene. So the last Ice Age, right? Um... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, we're currently in the Holocene, um, but there's actually a discussion currently going on. Um, that's actually very interesting because geologists are, we believe we're in a new, um, there's like talk between anthropologists and also geologists that we're in a new era, uh -huh. which would be the Anthropocene. Oh, I've heard about that, yeah. I actually went to a conference, uh, what is it, Association, American Association for the Advancement of Science, Triple AS, mm -hmm. and there was a whole um, section panel talking about, it was a bunch of geologists who are trying to decide when uh, the beginning of the Anthropocene is. Can't decide if it bends is. away or breaks up. I think Herd can put, push that rock off the cliff. <laughs> that so was a wanted. great explanation. Thank you. <laughs> and then hello to Jamestown. So we have a couple of questions, which is, what is the coolest thing we have seen on this dive so far? I want to say the jellyfish that we saw right before our watch started. Yeah, I didn't see that. Oh, it was so neat. So Jamestown, if you get a chance on the YouTube channel, you can back it up and back it up to, oh man, what are we, hour it's three late. now? So hour, about three and gets, uh, 15, three hours and 15 minutes ago. Shallower and we're starting to see And you're going to see this in. super, super cool jellyfish. Maybe, I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it should be kind of flattening out here. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing. Flater Mouse is up on Envy Proc if you want to play with the, the scene any better. Yeah. Another Ritagorgia here. And Lynette, we have a question for you. Oh no, I just want to know the path. So just looking out at the sonar, the scanning sonars off the vehicles, it looks like <coughs> our wall is shortening up and maybe gonna um, kind of start to disappear, which is consistent with what the ship's um, 
multi beam sonar from last night. Um, or actually, it wasn't last night. We're using last year's. Um, but what Nautilus collected from the hull mounted sonar, um, we would expect the the <coughs> wall here to get shorter um, and or disappear and just turn into a slope in the not too distant future. Roger. Our top technicians are on it. Yeah, I reckon they are. That little one might Come be down. different. Push in there a bit for us to. So this is a Chrysogorgia of some type. Uh, not sure which one, which species it is, but we haven't seen this one much um, today, certainly at all. Uh, but we have seen it in the area on previous dives. Push in a bit more if you want. It's it looks like a giant puff ball, like a dandelion. You want to kind of like blow on it and make a wish. Yeah. With its, uh, Shrimp associate. All right, thank you. What was the name of this guy? Okay, this, uh, it's a Chrysogorgia. Oh, okay. And it just has that super long stalk? Yep. Cool. And then I'm not sure if this next question is for Lynette, Chris, or Brian, but can you kind of tell us our general path that we're going on? Because it's different than the other paths that we've been on where we just slowly make our way up the side of a, a guillot or a sea mound. Yeah, so today we are um, we're on the top of the geo, which is a generally much flatter area. And so we've got this somewhat unusual kind of channel running through the, the center of the geo. And so we're running up this channel, which turned out to be a more of a good size 20, 30 meter um, rock wall with a channel formation at the bottom. Um, and it's been very biology light but geology heavy in terms of really beautiful um, cliff work and erosionary features Yeah. Um, here. And then as we move, we're moving kind of towards the northeast, um, towards the center of the top of the geo. Um, I expect this wall is going to peter out um, here soon, and we'll cross a little probably, I don't, actually, I don't know if it'll be sand or not, but we'll kind of cross a little basin and see if we can reacquire another wall feature um, to the northeast and climb and then investigate that. And that'll probably and then be pretty close to the end of the dive after we get over there. Awesome. Thank you. And Are you getting warm? Yeah, the chiller, the chiller oh. is off. Oh, okay. No. Gotcha. Ooh. So what do you think it is that we're not seeing as much life down here as compared to other areas? Is it because of the high sedimentation? I'd say soft rock. Yeah. Soft rock? I think that's probably... Not yet, anyways. I'm thinking of like Steely Dan, Soft Rock. Yeah, Soft Who's Rock's that? a decent guess. 1970s artist. And also a super cool ROV pilot. <laughs> oh, something just floated by. Look up a little for me. Are we going to be diving anymore on the seamount or just this side? Nope, we are We are done here. So um, NA-137 in 2021 
did a deep dive on the west side of this feature and came up from 3,000 meters uh, up to basically the top. And, uh, and Do now you we're remember what dive that was? No, not off the top of my head. Uh, no. Maybe dive 10? Dive 10? Maybe, I don't remember. But for some reason that sticks in my head. Okay, I can let me... Go find it. Go back. And so we'll move to the east-northeast overnight tonight and then kind of start progressively working our way further east and south um, for the next week. We're just over the halfway point of this expedition. Um. Yeah, that's both sad and joyous all at the same time. I don't know what I'm going to do when I get back to land and I can't talk to y'all guys at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Okay, question for Brian. What is the criteria for collecting a sample from a deep dive, or collecting a sample uh, giving, given Hercules' limited space? So as a general rule, um, we're looking for um, new and things we can't identify. So potential new species, um, and then things we can't identify from video alone, uh, and then getting like a voucher specimen of um, one of the dominant morphotypes or one of the things we're seeing most often that has a is obviously very ecologically important um, in the area we collect a sample of that just to make sure we're getting the ID right so we think a lot about this concept of voucher specimens so we go around here collect a bunch of video and we think we know what we're looking at or we may not Bring your head know to the left. say all of these look corals look the same and we'll try and collect one sample of all of that group and then send it to an expert uh, and look at it under a microscope and make sure it is what we think it is uh, and then kind of assume that all of the corals we've seen on that dive are that same species. Um, and then for the, some of the rock samples, uh, we're thinking about looking at um, different areas on the seamount. So we get one, try and get one deeper, try and get one shallower, and any time we see like a significant rock change or something like that, we'll um, try and take a, a rock sample um, and then we're taking eDNA samples or water samples that will filter for eDNA anywhere we see high density um, coral communities and we'll occasionally take one out in the middle of nowhere where there aren't any corals uh, as a comparison um, to the ones where we take close to the uh, like a coral garden. Okay this might be too crazy. Was it, do you mean it was the 10th dive we did or it was 1910? Let me find it. Actually, wait. Oh, and now we're going into like a fun little boulder field. That jellyfish was pretty awesome a while back. Sure. The um, I just came up, so the kind of the ridge is split, and we have all this jumbly stuff here. It's what's left of the cliff was right here. And I just thought I'd come up see some of the. Uh, stretch it out here. It's kind of a that double wall we saw. Yes, I am. So in the past year and a half, I've really gotten years. into bouldering, like climbing boulders, going all over. Oh, so cool. So I went down. There's a place right in between the Texas and Mexico um, border, and it's just filled with these ginormous boulders. And climbing all over those, jumping from boulder to boulder, it was Morning. so incredible. And so I just 
see all these boulders down here and I'm like, I want to go. These are definitely not the boulders you want to climb. You will 100% fall off. <laughs> the rocks are just too unstable. 1913. 1913. Okay. So when we dove here last, let me pull up my spreadsheet. Um, when we dove here last, we actually found a lot of ferromanganese crust. I have a bunch of samples from 1913. So it's just this side of the wall that looks like this. Oh, when you say 1913, you don't mean the year, right? No, I mean the dive. So right now we're on dive 1958. So this was uh, last season. NA 137, which was the last time we came to Kingman and Palmyra. And you were here on that expedition, right? That was the bird apocalypse? Yep, I was here. I collected a bunch of rocks for so my research. But, there. but only out of all the rocks I collected, one bridge nav. Come down five. Oh. Can we move two zero meters, three two zero, please? That was a cool little thing Thank that you. passed in front of the camera. That was on a Tudus Guardian. That was a what a what a? Tudus Guardian, the the flying spaceship from dive, the first dive of the expedition. Oh. I was wondering if that was something similar. Looks and like it was purple. Looks like we've got another um, Chrysogorgia and probably a baby predatory tunicate over here on the right. So because I hate the shark, or I hate the song Baby Shark with Passion, could you make up a song like Baby Tunicate? Music is not my forte. Oh, I remember he's uh, one of the few people on this watch who wasn't in band. I know. All right, we're good back here. Thank you. All right. Maybe Chris could make up a song with his harmonica. <laughs> you brought a harmonica? Yeah. Yes, I did. So on board we have a ukulele, a harmonica, and now Paula has a sea shanty about a whale shark. I see the makings of a really awesome band going down. Another Ritagorgia here, kind of in a weird place being in this little rock jumble down at the bottom. Much more used to seeing them out in an area where I'd expect them to get more current flow than being kind of tucked down in between a bunch of rocks. Down five. There's an educational version of Baby Shark. I am gonna look this up because I hate the song Baby Shark with a passion. Why? Because I hear it every day, oh. every class. And it truly gets stuck in your head. My, yes. my daughter loves it, she's 19 months old. And one of the, frankly, one of the first like cohesive, I won't call it a sentence because it was half hand gestures, but one of the first like multi-part um, communication abilities was hers I want you to play baby shark and it took us a couple of days to realize what she was asking for but she'd run up and start doing the hand motion and go do 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 um, until we figured out what, and then we took her to the uh, Pine Knoll Shores Aquarium and we said do you want to go see the sharks and she just went got really excited started jumping over down making the hand motion going do 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 and we realized what she wanted <laughs> Uh, this is a metallogorgia. This is, I think, uh, the first one we've seen here. So as, as we move out of the um, sheer rock wall, kind of coming around this corner into a, a different, the channel's taking a different direction. We're starting to pick up uh, that a thing little different coral assemblages. Looks like another type of chrysogorgia. I think it's that same one we saw uh, three corals ago. Or it may be a, a young metallogorgia. Do you want a closer look? If you can, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, zoom in. The one underneath? Yes, please. I 
I think this is a young Metallogorgia. Oh, no, 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 it's not. It's a Chrysogorgia. I got fooled by the two-dimensional nature of cameras. Yeah, so we got a good look at that one just a minute ago. All right, thanks. Okay, can go light. Great, Chris. Thanks a lot. We, Chris Kelly is watching, uh, and we just got your note, Chris, and thanks a lot. I was thinking it was probably about uh, so I appreciate the updated taxonomy on that. And hi, Chris. Look, <coughs> look down into the right a little. So going back to baby sharks, apparently that became the anthem for the Washington Nationals during their wor World Series run. All right. Got a beauty shot here. <laughs> Making me nervous again. Look down. <laughs> this is just such cool geolo geology. Uh, it came up and we don't have it. No. I'm not going to run into you. Lost the uh, opportunity there, and now you'll have to come up. So, as I was coming at you there, the tether was behind us, but now that, now that we stopped, it's kind of a bit tangled up on you. Another Ritagorgia here on this big uh, slab, which is really cool. Bridge nav. Can we move two zero meters zero five five, please? Thank you. like another former sponge attachment point here in that kind of the fuzzy sponge spot. Formerly known as polypoplagon. Yep. <laughs> another stalked crinoid here. More Ritagorgia down below. Dan or Lynette, will either one of y'all guys be on the Ocean Networks Canada cruise? Uh, yeah, I'll be on that cruise. Cool. Yeah. Just wondering. Online question. Predatory tunicate here How in the center. How about you, Katie? I will not be, but oh. I was on there last time we had an Ocean Networks Canada cruise. Nice. You want to zoom on him? Uh, sure. And then there's an Anthemastus over here on the right. Go ahead, Daryl. Push him there a bit. What is this? This is a predatory tunicate. It's uh, similar to the one we collected earlier in the cruise, but this is the one I'm more familiar with seeing. All right, we're good. Thank you. Okay. Were you able to figure out if that uh, other predatory tunicate was gravid or not? No, and I don't. I, I don't have the expertise in, in their anatomy to tell. Gorgia lurking down there.
Push in there now. Good things. A couple more little sponges here. Okay. Go away. So for those wondering, Ocean Networks Canada is um, an expedition slash company that we usually do about once a year. I don't believe we did it for last year because we were down in Hawaii the whole time. But it's um, outside of British Columbia and it is a underwater observatory. So it's a ginormous long tether called Neptune. And it goes stretches across three, uh, three different plates, so plate tectonics. Um, and has the plates going through the abyssal plains, hydrothermal vents, subduction zone. Um, really, really interesting stuff. They do a lot of long-term monitoring. And if you go to either YouTube or on nautiluslive.org and you type in WALL-E, Ocean Networks Canada, you will see my favorite little robot of all time. This is a bamboo coral. Uh, out there, and then some other type of Chrysogorgian here in the closer. Saw another one of these big kind of cantaloupe style bamboos uh, of 30 minutes ago or so. Uh, push in there for us. So thin. Yeah, a Ritagorgia, but with all its polyps retracted, which is kind of rare. Normally they normally they got their polyps out. All right, we're good. Thank you. Okay, go away. a little or, or come up or the other. Yeah, Chris, we'd love to have your company. Thanks for your note. And uh, definitely get into the science chat. I take you I think you and I are like the only two deep sea biologists that aren't in Scotland right now. <laughs> I keep trying to envision what formed this and how this really complicated rock work was formed. And I quick zoom there. keep thinking I have a, an idea and then, and then I'm not sure. And I think I'm wrong Bridge again. Bridge nav. Another one is little Chrysogorgias the thing that we've been picking up as the wall has gotten less steep. We've started picking up more of these. The thing that's tripping me up is the fact that the Roman okay, spectrometer said that this was um, silicate. silicate because I don't necessarily understand how that got here. However, if it is silicate, some of the some of the stuff kind of makes sense to me, like the channels and things. Um, if you guys think about hoodoos, which are very common, or not very common, but 
they're actually not really that common at all, but you see them in sandstone or siltstone. It's because of kind of the resistivity of different minerals in the rock. So where you see kind of it jut out. And if I see it again, I'll like show you guys these other things I've kind of been noticing, but it seems like if it's silicate, then like maybe quartz or a real, which is a very, very resistant mineral um, is really present in some of these places. And so that's why it's kind of holding together. But again, I'm not sure why or how the silicate got here and why there's so much yeah. of it. So normally we would think it's carbonate that caused this, um, but the Raman spectrometer was and has been analyzing um, all of this rock and it says it's, it's not that. And carbonate doesn't usually break that easily in, in a white powdery substance. Yeah, carbonate's not normally, um, it's just not normally like this. Yeah. And the other thing that's really weird is that there's no ferromanganese crust. I mean, maybe this kind of darker stuff is like the beginning of ferromanganese crust, but we've been to this seamount before on our last expedi ac expedition to Kingman and Palmyra on, a, on the western side, you said? Yeah, southwest corner. And we got actual ferromanganese crust. I have the rocks um, back at MGSL and I've analyzed them. Um, so we know that this seamount is old enough to have ferromanganese crust very encoded in some places, but not on this side of the seamount. I mean, we're a whole seven nautical miles away from the last dive site. Different depth, very different depth, but very geographically close. So this is what is perplexing me. So different question, uh, why is fire coral called fire coral? And is oh. it in the deep sea? Uh, fire coral is not in the deep sea. And ooh, there's a sea spider uh, top left. This is only the second one we've seen this expedition. Um, so this is a pycnogonid, um, which is a sea spider. It's not actually a true spider by any stretch of the imagination, but we call it a sea spider. Um, and they are voracious. Um, coral and cnidarian predators. Um, so back to the fire coral question as Dan gets set up for uh, a zoom on the sea spider. Um, <coughs> uh, I think they get their name because of their very nasty sting. Um, and there are, it's a hydrozoan and we see plenty of hydrozoans in the deep sea, but the specific um, fire coral I don't believe gets much deeper in like 100 feet or 30 meters or so. But having touched fire coral numerous times, it is it aptly burns. named. Okay, push in there a bit. Awesome, thank you. The worst part about fire coral is a lot of times its stinging um, tentacles actually exist a, a couple of centimeters out from the coral, so you don't have to touch the hard part. You can just get close enough to it and it gets stung. But so these sea spiders. Um, Are they in the arachnid family? Nope. I didn't think so, but nope. just want to double check. Um, so you can see that big kind of thick um, feeding proboscis angled down here. Uh, and these just literally walk over to some cnidarian and stick that in there and just start drinking um, them. And they get to be huge. This one's probably only 20 centimeters or something, but I've seen them, um, you know, well over half a meter. All right, we're good, thank you. So it's like a vampire. This, yeah, it, that's yeah. exactly what it is. Um, so this is the first one I've seen this expedition. I think Sarah said she saw one a couple dives ago. All right.
another predatory tunicate there hiding under the ledge. A quick zoom on him if you want. I hope our fan from the other day who was um, has been was very very much Iris looking to see these is tuning in today. Yeah, me too. Kind of a big I haven't one. heard from that person in a in a hot minute. So for those of you who have been watching a lot over the last few dives, you may have seen us collect two um, fossilized um, beaked whale scale, uh, beaks, um, which have been very cool. I've been doing some um, literature searching about that, and it appears to me that the center rostrum, uh, both of them appear to be more or less the same bone. Um, there's enough differences between the two we collected. I wouldn't be surprised if they were um, different species. Um, and they, it's a center rostrum from the base of the, like, where it would be a nose on a human um, out to the top is what we've collected on both of them for both. Um, and uh, there's several known species out here in modern times because they're fingered ferrous manganese crusted. They're probably over a million years old. Um, but it's been an interesting kind of deep dive looking at the anatomy of beach whale skulls trying to figure out exactly what we collected. So have you t uh, seen the third whale skull, or the third whale bone didn't that we didn't collect? I didn't know. I haven't gone back and looked at the, in the video for it. I'm just wondering if it's the same whale that just kind of got strung out. There was a, an article from um, the Indian Ocean about looking at um, the, tr the deep sea trawlers there apparently frequently pull up their skulls in different stages of fossilization. And that's, there's a whole paper from a couple of European institutions um, looking, at the re looking at all the different skulls they picked up out of a couple South African fishing ports. Um, and they looked very similar to the type of specimens we collected. Here's another Ritagorgia. This has definitely been the dive of a Ritagorgia on the terms of the biology, even though I think the geology for this dive clearly wins the... For yeah, the geology has definitely been amazing. So Coralie, is this your favorite dive? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, not enough basalt. Not enough basalt. Pretty stretched out there. Yeah, I'll move it back toward you once this move finishes. All right. And whenever we need to, we can bail on this feature and cross the, the low section and try and reacquire the wall on our side. Bridge nav. Can we move two zero meters, it. 315, please? Thank you. We kind of want to come up to the point there and then cross the skinny part. That so would be ideal, yep. Yeah. yeah, I think we should. But whenever whenever you feel like the ship motion isn't going to work in that direction, we can call it. But yes, as far as we can, if we can take it to the point, that's great. So Brian, going back to what you were talking about on the whales, um, is it only that rostrum bone that becomes fossilized or can other parts of it be fossilized as well? No, I mean, that's a good question. And I was wondering that myself reading the accounts from the, the study, looking at the ones that were covered in the trawl nets in South Africa. Um, and it was mainly skulls. So the skulls they were for mostly retract, uh, uh, 
collecting were more intact than just the rostrums that we were we found. Um, so I'm not sure what's happening to the rest of the skull, um, but they did not note in the paper about finding like rib bones or um, flipper bones. Awesome, thank you. Another one of those same sponges hiding back there that we collected a few minutes ago. And for those listening, uh, the whale fossil collections are not on the highlight reel quite yet. We just collected the second one yesterday. We started processing it. So give Let's it a couple of days and you'll probably see it on the highlight reel. We saw earlier that we couldn't get a good look at. Right. it. Can push in there a bit there. Great, thank you. Ooh. Okay, it can go away. I wonder what the Raman spectrometer would say about the color pigmentation on that guy. It's funny, you get a brand new technology like that that's never been deployed in this environment, I'm already like, well, I can't wait till it gets miniaturized, mi miniaturized and we can put it on the front of the vehicle and angle, you know, aim it. That would be so cool. Yeah, I got to watch them install it yesterday. That is a heavy piece of equipment. Yeah, the only thing that could I think that could undercut rock like this is water flow. So you're thinking this part was definitely above the water? I don't know. The 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 composition of the rock is what's killing me. If it was carbonate, I'd say absolutely. Looks like another bam likely bamboo stalk back in there. Uh, <coughs> zoom in on the Seems like an unusual okay. place for bamboo. Yeah. The fact that any anything That's is kind of on these softer okay. rocks oh, is unusual to me, but it kind of seems like these bamboo whips and the Gorgia and that one, prim was that a promote? No, no it, was, it was a different type of bamboo. Never mind then, but <laughs> it's just weird to me. I look down and to the left a bit. And the question that has the Roman spectrometer uh, tested any carbonate as a control? That would be a question for the Roman spectrometer team. I'm not quite sure. They were doing a whole bunch of different control we'll tests yesterday. No overhanging animals. And they will be up later on uh, in a couple more hours again. They were up all night. Yeah. So they're not. Yeah. On, there's only two of them, and they're not on a watch schedule. So. Yeah. But for everyone who, oh. for everyone who is wondering what is going on, <laughs> we have collected some of the material and we're going to figure out what it is once it comes back on board. But some of the stuff in, some of the, just looking at some of this rock type very much reminds me of some erosional features that I've seen before in different the sort of sandstones and siltstones, which is mostly made out of quartz. So that's why I am that and the 
raw and spectrometer team saying that most of this is silicate is what's Patrick making me lean more there. towards this is silicate. However, we, so there, I'm sure there is some uh, carbonate material in this Thought just because, great. just because, but uh, we'll see once we get all of the Can sample up. Away. So I assume one of the things we'll be doing, we'll want to do to it as an acid test and we'll sprinkle some acid on it and see if it dissolves. Yeah, did, do we know if there's HCl on board or? You said I, we, we you I used... I would assume there's some somewhere, but I've also used just kitchen vinegar before Yeah. Um, to see if you can get some bubbles. So if you drop an acid on carbonate, it, um, it bubbles. Because it dissolves. definitely rock jumble down here but I would have expected there to be a lot more given all the fractures and break yeah. points looking up on the wall this just doesn't feel like enough is this still talus when it's this big this no, no these are boulders okay for sure so these boulders um, I would expect more of them given how many angular break points there appear to be um, up on the wall Come back up now. Another glass sponge on a Ritagorgia and a sea lily or stalked crinoid hanging out on this face. Definitely does not look like this is a, a space limited environment. Do you want to keep hanging out on this wall? Yeah, see if we can make it around to the point. Yeah, okay. In 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh, think <laughs> don't think that's going to happen. Just keep moving that way and okay. walk away. Bridge nav. Can we move two zero meters, zero seven five, please? Thank you. Yeah, our wind's up a bit, current's up a bit, so. Temperature's back yeah. down now. <laughs> At least there's that. <laughs> <laughs> Quick zoom on whatever that is, lost in the brightness there. Baby crying, baby stalked crinoid. Two of them. Two of them, yeah. Okay, it can go away.
For some reason, that rock looks so like a duck face there. to me. A what? <laughs> like a duck face. There's the bill, um, the eye. I see it, yeah, I see it. This looks like that same sponge we collected earlier that we've been seeing a lot. That's making the big mats. Okay. See him on the rock pen there. Decapitated right. crinoid. Fooled me. Go ahead, Bridge. Roger. Did you get that pilot? I did. Okay. We're going to, uh, we might go boat chasing here for a minute. Yep. A quick zoom on the sponge. Yes, I am. Tether link's getting farther away from me. Okay, you can go away. Yeah, we're showing close to 30 knots of wind right now. All right. Perfect. Just in time for handover. Just in time. <laughs> <laughs> Almost survived the cliff. <laughs> They're working on holding position, I think. Yeah, so we'll let her yeah. do her thing for a while. Yeah. So we've got a little wind, wind um, increase right around uh, outside. So we're going to hold out here for a little bit while we reevaluate some head. Forgot? Did we look at this one before? I'm uh, not sure. Let's zoom in Let's there, Derek. Don't think we looked at this individual, but it looks like the same one that we've been looking, seeing most of this dive. like crabs? I forget. I, I, li I like crabs. Dan, that's right. It's Dan doesn't like crabs. Oh, Dan. Huh? <laughs> You'll learn to love crabs. Oh. This guy's kind of cool looking. Missing a leg? 
That'll be kind of tight there. Where is he? Okay, there. Zoom in. Video. Video, video, video. Guess we'll wait. Good hand over crab. So I'm pretty sure this is a. Reach over and zoom in on that camera. A lithoted crab. Other one. A lithodes. Uh, king crab, I believe. The uh, one to the left. No, the joystick. That one. Nice and easy. A little bit more. Scared it. Okay, Dave's on in video. Just in time for a spiky crab. How cool is that? It's got like that tiny little leg growing back in the back. It's so cute. Probably got ripped off at some point. It looks like it's growing back. I don't know. That's my guess. Non biologist. Me neither. <coughs> so I can do a little housekeeping while we're waiting. Uh oh. Parked on the rock. Doink. Nice one. We're doing a watch change, so um, give us a moment. It's pretty cool. You can actually see a solitary hydroid, two solitary hydroids living on the, growing on the leg of the crab. Oh, that is cool. All right, I'm going to pass over to Adam. Have a good right day. Right. Uh, video go away. Reach over and pull that camera back. Thank you. 
You're there. Good morning to everybody tuning in online. We are on watch change. Test, test. Five by five, Dave. Test, test. <laughs> five by five. <laughs> Fiver by five. Oh, that was Adam? That was me. It wasn't Dave. Sorry, Dave. That's all right. I would never mistake you for Adam. <laughs> Except wow. for that one time. That was time. That's all right. Good morning, 8 to 12. Hey. Good morning. How's everybody feeling this morning? Whoop, whoop. Let's go. Why Weisler pose in hand? <laughs> that wasn't in the handover? Weisler pose in hand? Huh. Huh. Mike, I don't think they're going to be slurping that rock. Mike, how's your Irish accent? Can you do an Irish yeah. accent? Because we're used to that now. Yeah, we... You know. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> not it. That was a great introduction for our uh, tech chief who's now in the van. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> okay. Um, before we do a full round of intros, we're science. It sounds like we've been uh, going along this little feature here. Is that still your hope and dream? Well, we're kind of near the end of it, right? Yeah. So we're going to want to cross, uh, we'll follow it a little bit more, cross over that channel yep. to the next, next one. Yep. Yeah, the other watch I mentioned, they were going to kind of tuck around and then... Start to head over. Still yeah, and, good? We're, and we're probably not going up on top to waypoint seven. We'll probably continue to follow the the wall. Follow the wall this way? No. Uh, follow whichever, the wall this way. Whichever way you, the ship would like to go, probably that way, the second way. Yeah. Okay. Once we get over there, we can uh, reevaluate. The weather has been gusting up a little bit, mm -hmm. so we're gonna have to see how uh, how we do. Let's, uh, where's Vanny? Let's go. <laughs> There's a, the top is kind of interesting here. Are we at the top or are we kind of halfway up? We are on the side of this uh, little knoll. Cliff knoll. Are we looking at critters or are we looking at rocks? Uh, both. Both, yep. These are interesting. What is that? <laughs> So did you want to see the top of this and eat yeah. sponges? Yeah. Or? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We're looking at sponges. Uh, is that a sponge? I think that's so. That's a sponge. Yeah. yeah. Can we look at the sponge? Which one? Uh, this one. We're gonna put it in a move if that's okay with everyone. Uh, no, maybe nope. let's we'll wait, wait just a minute. Yeah. You wanna do up up first? Yeah, I like to zig around up here see what it looks like. Copy. Zig in. Zig around. That is a non stop. So interesting. It's all the fuzz. It's like a hat. Hat fuzz. <laughs> what is this texture? Is it Aren't those its uh its legs Look at all and this. that's dead sponge, yeah? Dead sponge? Dead sponge. This well, all belongs to the dead. sponge? No, I think there was another one right next to it. I thought it was like, there's like a rock under this, right? Uh-huh. Like that's a surface, it's not. Yeah, it looks like th those are the sponge's uh, attachment threads, no? 
Yeah, that's. I think so. Looks pretty alive. It does. A lot. What's all this other? That was dead sponge. I think that's there was another was one there. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I don't really know what this is. Okay. Are we good on the? We good that on one this? Or? Yeah, we're good. Thank you. Okay, when we're ready. See that one back there? Yeah, it looks similar. Yeah. We've been on watch for two minutes and already. <laughs> 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 already the good stuff. Zooming in on this one too, Jules? Yep. Okay. Okay, zoom in, Dave. That looks like the same one. Our same huh. species. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A lot going on in it's, its threads, fun. huh? Yeah. yeah. Look at wow. the skirt. That's the place I mean, to be there. Some <laughs> some sort of unstocked euplectellid is my assumption here. A Jules Kuriti. Oh, oh, that looks exactly right. Feronemati there? Yes. Polyopagon. Absolutely. Is it another polyopagon? Sure looks yes, like it. Yes, it is. Awesome. Okay, carry on. Yep. Thanks. I'd like to make a move closer to this feature. Uh, we've been kind of zigging back and forth, but if everyone's okay with that, just a short move to get. Yeah, actually, yeah, what I'd like to do, sorry, yeah. Robert, can we try and get the sponge in the sights of the laser? Oh. Huh. So uh, the laser camera yeah. is the far left there, yeah, yeah. so you're. The rear is hanging off the end of this thing. Mm. Can you full screen the camera? That, uh, no. backwards that's right oh that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> uh, wait what's backwards the camera the orientation the orientation so when you uh, go left you go right and vice versa great so i need to go right right <laughs> right so that the camera goes left sure <laughs> no that's not what's happening and then there's a delay too to add to the fun Oh, look at that, Nerda Gorgia. So back is forward. Right? I'm, I'm afraid I'm not very good at this kind of thing. It could. Oh, they, there it is. Did they fix it? I don't know. Uh, it looks like going back is going back. I think they rotated it. Yeah. Oh, they did? Yeah. Okay. But there's a big time delay, too. So there's that feature. Feature, not a bug. <laughs> okay, and then I gotta get close to it? No, no, you wanna stay at about three meters. Oh. <laughs> oh, the hair looks really great in that shot, though. It looks like a wig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're not fooling anyone, C4. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So the center of the picture is? Yeah, that's where the laser's hitting. All right. I suppose we could do some introductions. Yeah. Okay, no, I was waiting. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, well, good morning. Uh, why don't we start off with introductions and then name like our hobbies, what we like to do on our downtime. Because not only we have new viewers, we have a new team member on our watch. Ooh. Ooh. Let's go. Ooh. Uh, all right, I'm Adam Sewell. I'm uh, watch lead for 8 to 12. I'm a professor at University of Rhode Island and I'm the director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, which is, uh, the you know, through NOAA, funds a, a lot of these OET expeditions. Um, in, I'm a submarine volcanologist or marine geologist, and in my hobby, I'd say it's 3D printing right now. Ooh. Really? Wow. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. I'm Jules. Um, um, I am a biologist uh, on the H-12 watch. I work at the Museum of Comparative Zoology at Harvard. And I like... Harvard College? Uh, yeah. yeah. No. You know, <laughs> that one. <laughs> Harvard University. <laughs> um, I like hiking. Ah, that's good. One. Nice. I like hiking, too. Oh. Hi everyone, my name is Paola Santiago. I am this was data logger and I am a marine biologist from Puerto Rico and work in coral restoration. And as hobbies goes, I like uh, graphic designing. Ooh. 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 So will you be uh, helping us with the art gallery? When I go? <laughs> she did, she did the bamboo yeah. with the panda. No, no, I mean uh, like going up online. Oh, oh nice. yeah. Like Actually, you should or, or even Instagram like story takeover. Yes, Ooh. stickers. Or stickers. <laughs> I love that. But yes, my graphic skills don't translate that well into, <laughs> into physical <laughs> drawing. <laughs> uh, okay, well, hello, everyone. My name is Annie Halleck. I am this watch's SCF, Science Communication Fellow. Um, this is my first year sailing with the Nautilus. I'm from Pongo Pongo, American Samoa. Uh, and my hobbies would, well, back home, I, I like to go free diving. Ooh. Ooh. So, yes, I'm looking forward to doing that back home. So cool. Yeah. So is there a laser they use to, to like, mark the spot? You know, the yes, spot? It, it used to have a, a kind of visual cue. I think for our purposes, I think we've been on it enough oh. that... Uh, it's it's continuously measuring now, but uh, ah. okay. So you think we're centered up enough, or I think so. Huh. Uh, in about forty-five <laughs> minutes, uh, Pablo will be back in here, and we oh. can tell. I thought you were gonna say centered up enough in forty-five minutes. <laughs> oh my <laughs> gosh! Like, well, so we have to wait forty-five minutes for Pablo to. But uh, <laughs> I. I am interested, so folks have said the top of this thing is somewhat uninteresting, but I haven't really seen it, and I see some kind of boulders around. Do we have enough leash to kind of explore up here a little bit? So we're done with the sponge? Yeah, I think so. Moving on. Okay, when our front so row is ready. I think, uh, actually, we need yeah. a move. I'd like to do a move, thank you. Yeah, we've been doing kind of short zigzag moves um, to go in directions that the ship is happy with when we have higher uh, swell like this and wind. So I'm gonna do a move zero six five, uh, about th 20 meters. Zero six five, but, uh, but I wanna go 
like explore the top like at 300. Sorry, uh, 330. Oh, okay. The opposite of 065. Gotcha. Does that work? Yep. Great. Bridge nav. Good morning. Uh, two zero meter is three three zero, please. Samantha. Adam. Who, doc, Dr. Sewell. Who are you? <laughs> it's a question that I've been uh, who, who wrestling with all you? my life. Um, Samantha Wishnack, navigator for H twelve, also the operations coordinator for the Ocean Exploration Trust which is the nonprofit that owns and operates Nautilus. Um, it's my full time all year round, either on the ship or on shore, planning expeditions. Um, hobbies, I love being at sea, but I'm assuming you're talking about land hobbies. <laughs> that sounds so. like a, more like a work hobby. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all consuming life hobby. Um, I love gardening when I oh, have yes. a long enough time on land to do so. I think we'll switch to maybe skip over to video while RV is getting settled in. Video. Uh, Dave Robertson, uh, lead video engineer on the uh, expedition this time around. Uh, and sitting in the video chair, making the cameras look as uh, best I can. Um, hobbies, golly. Uh, I do a lot of home improvement stuff because we're remodeling a house uh, on the coast of Oregon for our retirement place. So uh, plumbing. Electrical, uh, some carpentry. Oh, those are very productive hobbies. Yeah. Yeah. Is Dave coming in quiet for other people? Or is it just me? You guys always say that. I, I'm pegging no, the meters. Just I hear absolutely pegging the meters fine. on the SPL. Okay. Great. I'm glad you're fine. <laughs> ROV. Robert. No, no, we're Robert. Going, we're not going from that end. Well, I, I started already. Oh, you did? We're, we're zigzagging. Jumping around? <laughs> All right, I'm Robert Waters, uh, currently the Herc pilot, and uh, I have all kinds of hobbies, expensive hobbies. <laughs> 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 they keep me broke. <laughs> and at sea. <laughs> and at sea. <laughs> Do you want to name one of them? Uh, Off-roading? Yeah, that's an expensive hobby. Uh, yeah. Checks out. Checks out. <laughs> Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, aloha kako. Uh, I am Mike Burns. I am the new Atalanta pilot for this uh, for this part of the cruise. Um, also serving as the uh, deck chief. Uh, currently, current city that I'm living in is Glassboro, New Jersey, uh, but originally from Maui. Um, and one of my hobbies is uh, backpacking. Uh, among other things in the water. So. Welcome, Ooh. Mike. So you Thank go you. backpacking in the water? In the water yeah. nope. I go backpacking <laughs> in the water when I have my scuba tank on. <laughs> <laughs> literal, literal backpack. Welcome, Mike. Uh, you'll notice that no small uh, mistake gets missed <laughs> by, this, uh, <laughs> by this watch. And they will pin you down on every one of them. You're actually in the roasting chair? <laughs> yep. <Perfect>. Welcome. <laughs> Okay, so we're about halfway through that step, 330. We can get a little closer to, if we'd like. What happens if you do that? You make things better. Great, I'm gonna do that then. Bridge nav. How far afield are we exploring here? Let's uh, add another 230 Till we get to, to like, please. monotonous sediment flat, flat stuff okay the deck screen yeah there is um, not sure exactly what's going on right now um, well it's because we've got all of these other cameras up there yeah Yes, we do. <laughs> so I feel like this is Dan mode. That, this um, is very Dan, Dan mode. You could, <laughs> you could fire the uh, dive salvo. That'll that'll bring everything but, back. But we want to know how to get back to Dan mode if we're yeah, lasering they, and stuff. Right. Then I'll have to uh, do that selectively. Yep. Huh. 
That's different. Usually the gauges are on the left. Huh? Dan's gotten to set <laughs> dive mode too. No, no, no. <laughs> no, he isn't allowed. When the cat's away. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's going down the slopage over there, so we don't yeah, it looks like fall it. off the edge. So this is a new spot for for us on this expedition. We've mainly been working our way up. Oh, there's a there's yeah. What's here. this? Mainly been working our way up the sides of these uh, seamounts, but now we're up at the top of a flat top seamount, and the very top of this one has a bit of Can we uh, zoom in? kind of deformation. It You're looks like, like right on the edge of that thing. Looks like a paragorgia. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. It's an interesting spot, yeah. Joe's. <laughs> Maybe current just like blasts through okay. that little gap. Well, hang on, we gotta yeah. sort out our action here. So currently you're right on the edge of that thing. Yep. So the the altimeter is hanging over the edge. So it says you got all kinds of altitude, but you're very soon gonna be scraping the dirt on the top of the right ledge here. here. So you're gonna have to come up. Coming up. Oh yeah, that's quite a ledge. Hmm. Okay, we're good. I just wanted to see what it was. Thank you. We'll wait a second for the ship. All right, sir. We've got 10 meters left on this move. There's a, a rock pen. Oh, science, is your intent to keep going up this little slope here? Yes. Or to the top? Uh, till we run out of interesting things. Is that what it is? Okay. <laughs> the rock pen? Uh, yeah, it looks like that one. In that case, you want to keep moving then? Yep. Yeah. Okay, that's whatever that <laughs> motion means. Bridge now. Sure it does. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's the most likely <laughs> thing it would be. It's a little ambiguous. Let's add uh, two mark. zero meters to that moves Four. three three zero. <laughs> How did these large rocks end up at the top here? Yeah, so it looks like this, the center of this flat top seamount has bowed up and essentially cracked here in the middle of it. And so I expect that as we move further to the northwest, we'll see another little ledge and it probably broke off the, the ledge. Um, I don't know why exactly it would kind of flex up in the middle. But uh, interesting. I don't know if it's common to these seamounts. We haven't really explored the tops of them very much because they're mostly heavily sedimented, and yeah. uh, so there's not a lot of of the kind of life we've been looking for that attaches to hard rocks. those lines in the sand too. Yeah, that's really probably a apart. crack under the sediment oh, where the sediment okay. is kind of, you're just seeing a gotcha. little expression of it. Looks like another seat button. Or question mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can we zoom here please?
current up here. There's a fair bit of current? Well, not bad, it's just it's noticeable now. Mm -hmm. Looks like Anthoptella. Doesn't look too happy. A really happy interaction. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> oh, it does look kind of broken. No, I guess that's just the angle. No, I I think that's anthoptelum, which is uh, actually, hold on. <laughs> are we seeing a- I still think it's anthoptelum. Are we seeing its peduncle? Yes. Indeed. Peduncle, subsurface peduncle. <laughs> <laughs> Don't see well, many of those around here. Sub. No. Semi <laughs> it's like a radish that grew out of the ground or something. Yeah. What do you call something that's sitting on the ground? Or uh, above the ground? No clue. I just say sitting on the ground. <laughs> 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 Thanks. <laughs> like a scientific term for sitting on the ground? Well, versus buried in the ground. Uh, Plopped. Plopped. <laughs> <laughs> this is going <laughs> All right, I think we're good on this one. One of my favorite words is subaerial. Well, sub favorite and also frustrating because it just sounds, I don't know, the fact that it's like under air, it means just like- Everything? Out on the surface. Yeah, it's like anything on land. And I'm like, why don't you just say it's <laughs> on land? Yeah, because <laughs> stuff on down here is subaerial. I mean, it's under air, isn't it? But it's also submarine. It's both, yeah. Subaerial submarine. <laughs> Sub aerial marine, good band name. <laughs> okay, well, if anyone out there knows what something was called when it's sitting on top of something <laughs> instead of underneath, oh, Annie's not here to view your comments at the moment. It's a little quieter out of here. Do we know who their uh, interaction is with right now? Okay, someone in the comments said that is the peduncle and it isn't subsurface, it's on the top yeah. of for these rock pens. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Do then, Dave? What's this? Halosaur. Has halosaur vibes. It's the same one. It's been following us around to all yeah. these, <laughs> all these dives. Tour guide. Yeah. It's like they don't understand, but to the right is the North Pacific Ocean. <laughs> uh, nope, not today. Oh no. <laughs> I think we've lost it actually. <laughs> Yep. Oh no, how are we ever going to get home? I know. <laughs> how will we know where we are? That's cool. I like seeing these uh, like little expressions of cracks underneath. Do they have a formal term? Uh, um, sub aerial. <laughs> <laughs> sub sand. I mean, they're kind of micro grobbins. I'm sorry? <laughs> Word of the day, ding ding. Can you, can you uh, define? Yeah, grobin is a is a down dropped piece of uh, land, and these look like about 
10 centimeter deep little grobbins. So they'd be micro. Micro. Grobbins. Wow, look at this. This is a, There's got to be bigger stuff up here if we're seeing this big old chunk of rock sitting on. Uh, I wish we had a term for sitting on top of the Thank sediment. You. Jesus. Yes. <laughs> These are some cool rocks. Yeah. You think we can grab that one? Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're gonna need a bigger boat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting how those two on the bottom have the same kind of uh, kind of delineation on the side but they're sitting stacked next to each other. Mm -hmm. We don't need to go look at them. But. Is anyone else getting nervous when you're driving and you see the falling rock sign? <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking that. Were like, you? It's kind of odd. Like, what are you supposed to do? I don't know. Don't I, I go on high alert. I'm like, go okay. faster. What's coming down do you the just hill? Just go faster. <laughs> <laughs> just go faster. Like, there's not much else you can do. Yeah, I'd rather not know, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I man. always think it's a very slow, low chance. It's not going to be me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Are these, what are those? What, what? Tiny Circle. crinoids? What is this? There's some like further around here too. That's closer. <laughs> Zoom in, Dave. Anyway. <coughs> same, same. Coral? Sponge? Looks like coral. That looks like a coral.